Hello, welcome back to the Kitchen Table Modeler. My name's Ian and this is my kitchen table where I do all my modelling. Back again uh, for another inbox review um, of, over my shoulder, uh, Trumpeter's reasonably new 135th scale KETT recovery vehicle based on the Maz 3, 537 heavy truck. It's a bit of a mouthful, I do know. Um, this is a kit which, when I saw it came out, um, and it's, it was the tool, the parts to make this kit were tooled in 2020, so when I saw it was coming out, it was one I really, really wanted to get. Regular viewers of the channel know I've got a bit of a fetish almost for um, heavy armoured um, engineer based vehicles, um, but I also like just anything odd, and this is quite an odd vehicle. The Maz itself is an iconic vehicle and Trumpeter do quite a number of different chassis um, or a number of different vehicles using this chassis and this is the the latest one. Um, there is another company which if I check on my references um, is okay yep so Panzer Shop dot cz they tooled this kit as a resin conversion so you had to buy one of the mazes that tr uh, trump the made and then there's a resin conversion set for the recovery vehicle in the back and then in 2020 trump that actually tooled up the, the the recovery vehicle which is fantastic for folk like me that like sort of this operational engineers military engineer type vehicles so that was really the only reason i wanted to get this kit um it, it looked to be quite an impressive kit and it's certainly something that was unusual. I don't think you see just too many of them around. Um, I'm not a huge wealth of knowledge when it comes to Russian or again, Eastern European um, military vehicles, but they interest me. So I thought I'd grab this one and we'd have a look at it. Um, I've not really looked in the box at all. So enough waffling for me. Let's get on the table and see what we get. So we're on the table. Excuse the glare. The lights are a bit shiny on this box. Right, so KET recovery vehicle based on the Maz 537 heavy truck. So this is Trumpeter. Kit number. You never find the numbers when you're looking for them. Okay, so we'll look on the side of the box here if I can get it in film. Kit number 01079, 135th scale. And we'll look in the particulars on the box. It's 294mm long, 83mm wide. 600 plus parts and uh, yep if we look here at the signature on the picture we're looking at 2020 so look at the cad images on the side and there's the blurb if you want to pause that you'll be able to read it made in china copyright 2021 so we are looking at less than a year old there's the end of the box. It is a massive box. It's a bit difficult to get in the camera. And then if we look on the other side, we've got the painting options. So we've got overall Russian green, Russian green with white markings. And then we've got a tricolor camo uh, on the side. It looks like we've got three frets of PE and a small decal sheet. And it is obviously made in China and it's 14 years and over. So let's get the lid off and have a look inside. Oh, it's a bit tight, which is good. Now, Trumpeter always have really good stout boxes. So 10 out of 10 for that. Open the box and it's nicely packed in there. I'm gonna zoom it in a little bit, just so we get as much in the picture as we can. Right, so we've got instructions, color call outs, and then we've got Quite a number of plastic sprues in there. We've got rubber tires, a whole hush of them. Body parts, and other sprues in the end. So what I'm gonna do, I'll just set the box to one side and we'll go through the instructions first. Now, if I can get that in a bit closer still, we get a decent view on them. Right, so you've got the old read before assembly parts in there. And then, First page is the sprue layout. 
and then we move on to part one which obviously we start with the cab so we've got glazing for the doors we've got some holes to drill on the roof doors on door handles so it's obviously posable open and closed front windscreens lights mirrors side windows um, we've got the dash going in here so we've got options for the decals or we've got options for photo etch something to look at when we get through it right we'll just move the color call outs and look at them once we've done through the instructions it's finishing the cab off then for step two step three we're moving on to what i would assume will be the um, body of the vehicle where the engine is <clears throat> step four we're starting to look at the chassis step five the chassis is built <clears throat> we're starting to move on to the torsion bar suspensions and the starting in the final drives and they're all going on the chassis spaces and then moving to step six which is looking like transmission uh, and then we're putting on the suspension unit with the torques uh, the torsion bar suspension units and, and wishbones Now, I'd imagine this construction will be the same for all these Maz kits that Trump to do. Um, so, we've got suspension on the other side. So, you've got front and rear. And then part eight, we're starting to put on the outringers. We've got suspension, um, shock absorbers going on at the suspension. A few more spaces going in the chassis. And the drive shafts going out to the hubs. This looks to be the front bumper that's on the chassis already. Uh, part 9, we've got the final drive hub units. Uh, and we've also got possibly a fuel tank or some sort of liquid tank here. And maybe a compressor or something going on this side. Not just too sure about that. And then 10, we're still working with suspension. It doesn't actually tell you what they are. Um, but it must be maybe springs or some sort of suspension unit for it to join the two rear axles together. Like I said in the intro, I am no expert on these vehicles, so if I say something that's wrong, please feel free to correct me. Um, but let's let's move on. So main winch going in on the deck. This is part 11. Goes right down saying not cement so maybe it's movable parts which is really good and we've got a picture here of how the winch goes the winch rope goes round um part 12 we are moving on to probably the drives for the winch so it's a pto drive um and then we've got some outriggers part 13 is the cab base uh steering wheel pedals few detailed parts part 14 you are working on the underside of the cab um, and you're putting the bench seat in part 15 cab go down on the chassis 16 underneath the chassis so we're getting a few more bits and pieces on maybe the steering um, steering boxes maybe 17 huge wheels and tires going on so you've got the wheels tires on which is really good because you've got to paint them separate weather up the wheels you know give them a scuff up with a sand and stick once they're painted put them together you're going to get a really sharp sharp um, delineation between the tires and the hub possibly fuel tanks here two sets of and then moving on to part 18 we're getting more maybe a tank or a, a storage lockers i'm not sure um please feel free to comment what it is so that's part 18 so it's quite a, quite a few steps here part 19 right so i'm assuming these are the fuel tanks they're going on we've got some small boxes going on onto the chassis cabs going on engine covers going on so obviously it's there's no engine detail in this kit and i do believe you can get a resin engine for this kit if you wanted to super detail it certainly not something i'm interested in but 
that looks like the bulk of the construction done for the main vehicle unit and the winch then part 20 we're obviously starting to move on to the recovery equipment that goes on the back of the vehicle so this will be where the construction will get a bit complicated and detailed take your time you should be okay 21 yeah we're moving on to more of these fold out legs or oh, this is a, tri a, a bipod jib for the winch i think looking at it um so we've got a mix of plastic and pe parts going down here it's saying don't cement so there's obviously some movable parts here and then that gets fixed you don't cement so this is a positionable vehicle if you're careful you'll be able to either have it open or stowed which is good gives you the options if you want to store it and display it with different um at different times with different configurations part 22 so the crane assembly is going onto the rear of the vehicle and then you get in the winch rope fed up through to the top of the jib so you know it's, it's quite a detailed kit and it's going to look really realistic um, and this here looks like outrigger legs don't cement so it does look like it's quite poseable and then part 23 looks to be all the different tools and tool sets and a-frames and such like going on to a mudguard assembly for the rear of the vehicle and sure enough part 24 then this is the mudguard assembly going on to either side and a few storage boxes and it shows you the folded up and the deployed and there we go part 25 we're um, putting on the spare wheel and a couple of small bits of greeblies and the kit is done fantastic so color call outs we have got a overall um, Russian green vehicle uh, both with the Russian star on it for a and then B you've got overall green with white fenders and You've got the yellow and black chevrons and the Russian star on the front. Uh, they're giving you color call-outs for Mr. Hobby, uh, Vallejo, Model Master, Tamiya and Humbrol. So you've got a good selection of paints um, for completing the vehicle. And then we turn it over. We've got a fantastic uh, Russian tricolor um, green sand and black camouflage scheme, which looks interesting indeed. Um, so yeah, no unit markings, doesn't tell you what the vehicle's for, you know, so you need to do a bit of research if you want to do a specific vehicle, but all the same, it looks like a fantastic kit. So let's get the kit out of the box. Some of the stuff I'm not going to bother taking out of the bag, some of it I will. Um, so we may as well start with the small bits. We have got a nice set of wheels. Uh, these bags are taped, which makes it kind of easier to get in. It's not like Tamiya that staples them. Um, Trumpeter are always really good at packaging their kits. Right, the tyres, they're kind of vinyly rubber, um, so then you're not going to get a bulge on them easily, but if you took a sand and stick, they are going to scuff up quite nicely, um, and you might need to give them a spray with a bit of a matte varnish to kind of get that rubbery sheen gone, but, you know, the detail's there, the tread pattern is correct, um, you can get resin replacements if you really wish, but if you want to keep the cost down, because this is quite an expensive kit, I think I paid about... Um, 95 pounds UK for it. Um, you can just use the rubber out the, straight out of the kit as it goes. Right, next part, the cab. The iconic cab, I have to say. Um, I'm gonna have to get a pair of scissors because they are heat sealed shut. Maz is an iconic, iconic vehicle. Um, and like I said, Trump did do a number of different vehicles based on this chassis. Trumpeter, as always, nice, hard, crisp plastic with beautifully molded detail. Now, you've got a little bit of an injection release point there on the top, um, but the actual small detail is fantastically molded on this vehicle. We look at the front, it's very clean and crisp, a little bit of flash on the bottom edge, but nothing that's to be worried about. And then we look inside, we've got the Trumpeter. 135th Maz 537G, so that's the kit that this has come from. A few ejector pin marks, but nothing deadly and nothing you're really going to see once you build the kit up. Um, so a little bit of flash removal, but all in all, really nice crisp molding, beautiful detail. Certainly will paint up Loveland. 
Right, moving on next, we have got what I assume is one of the newer pieces, uh, is the engine cover. Now this is absolutely beautiful. The, the molding is really, really crisp. The, you've got all the panel latches there. You've got bolt heads. You've got the grills, louver grills. Uh, on the top, you've got louver grills that are actually open. A little bit of cleanup. There's a little bit of flash in them, but nothing you could not manage to clean up. On the top, you've got all the recessed detail where it's supposed to be on the panel joints and whatnot. All in all, a lovely, lovely part. Moving on from that part, we've got the photo etch, and I'm not going to take this out because Trumpet the photo etch is usually really, really good. Um, there's the dash, beautifully rendered, and if they've got decals there, then you may be able to sandwich it with the top plates and put a little bit of um, PVA or Crystal Clear, Micro, Micro Industries Crystal Clear, and get your glass looking uh, dials. A few holders or something there, but all really, really beautifully made. Yeah, Trumpeter, Trumpeter PE is usually pretty good. Right, suspension arms, I'm not going to get these out of the bag. They are crisply moulded. They have, you should be able to see that, they have got beautiful moulded detail on them. Easily cleaned up, easy to use. Right, third sheet of PE, again, beautifully etched, simple to use. And you've got black cotton rope, which I would probably replace. If you can see, I don't know if you can see the little fuzz on the edge of the rope, um, replace that for a copper twisted rope. Far better detail, far more realistic. Right, sprue F. So we've got some finely molded fire extinguishers. Probably a little bit clunky, but this is Russian vehicles. They they're not exactly made fin fin with finesse in mind. They're practical vehicles. Grab handles with. Good locating pins and nice bolt detail on them. Doors again, cleanly molded. Deep ejector pins, but you're not going to see any of them. But yeah, nice parts. Clear parts again. I'm not going to take them out, but they are crystal clear. Nothing wrong with them whatsoever. And if you look at the headlights, you've got the sort of etching in the light glass that spreads the beam. So you know they're really good too. And the decals which i'm not going to take out but that's not going to give anyone heartache with decals trump the decals are usually pretty good um and there's not many of them which is even better if you don't like decaling right then so moving on to sprue r let's get this one out of the bag and see what we've got not again this is completely new to me so i don't actually know which parts is what so we'll just call it as we see it Heat seal bags, which is fair enough, no staples. So, nice, crisp, um, hard plastic, so it's going to be nice to work with. These actually look like the rear fenders. We've got beautiful detail on the doors, the hinges, uh, recesses for handle to go in there. Really nicely molded, very minimal burring, um, virtually no flash whatsoever as far as I can see. Uh, really, really nice parts. Ejector pins, not anywhere that's going to give you any problems whatsoever. Um, part P next. Now, part P, I, if we look at the instructions, I noticed that the, the chassis, when you're doing the chassis, it is frame P you're needing for the chassis part. So there is another frame in the kit, I think, that's got slightly different chassis parts but again nice hard plastic it's a similar color to this so this is probably one of the new tooled parts if we look at the chassis members you've got beautiful bolt detail over the attachment points and you've got really really prominent attachment points for all the parts nothing wrong with that um, possibly some wheel rim detail there look on the reverse been pretty heftily chunked out of the mold so you might need to clean up those ejector pin marks um, you're probably not going to see them but just to make sure that they don't get in foul in any fit then then just clean them up and make sure they're out of the way but other is that yeah really nice nicely molded parts i have to say 
Right, we are now on to sprue S, which again I would say this is made for this kit because it looks like it's got the parts for the A-frame and the outrigger legs. So nice, kind of off grey, almost the same colour as XF20 in that sort of gold grey colour plastic. Um, very light on injector pins here on these parts with all these extra push points on the edge of the part. A bit more clean up but really nice. If we look at the round parts there is a little bit of burring if I can get it to focus. There's a little bit of burring down those A-frame parts but nothing that's not going to take a quick swipe off a sander to clean up. Um, all in all nice fine detail parts. A little chunky on the attachment points so you're going to take a bit of care to cut some of these fragile parts off but nothing that a good set of sprue nippers won't sort out right uh frame t again this looks like a frame that's been molded specifically for this kit um we're looking at all the sort of small detail parts handles wheels storage boxes these have been slide molded by the looks of it they're really really nice if we look at that you've got hinge detail and latch detail on both sides so that's definitely been slide molded and there is no seam lines whatsoever fantastic parts trumpeter they do build really really good model kits so it's a double frame there's two sets of um, the T sprues so I'm not get the second one out and then we're moving on to G oh no this is Q sorry Q I think is this a no it's not a double Screw Q again this nice grey plastic a couple of boxes here that have been slide moulded on either end with detail on all four sides beautifully moulded um, no flash whatsoever a lot of clean up on some of these smaller parts where you've got a lot of push pins to avoid ejector pins on the part itself and a number of ejector pin parts but you're never going to see them um, if we look on the A-frame part the burring is very very minimal if I can get it to focus come on focus there we go so the burring is very minimal a little bit of clean up with this light sand and sponge and you're going to be done um, and even down to I'm assuming this is a ladder part here beautifully moulded um, but care is going to have to be taken removing it from the sprue because the, 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 the mounting point is quite chunky. Um, so you are going to need a decent set of sprue cutters for these this model, but nothing that you can't handle. Goodness me. Right, this is a double frame. So this is frame D and this is all the running gear. Take one of these out of the bag, leave the other one in. So we've got wheels beautifully beautifully molded wheel rims um, loads of detail loads of bolt detail it'll take a dry brush and a wash beautifully uh, if we look on the connection points on the back here is the connection point slide molded on the drive hubs that there goes into that there so you're gonna have a really good solid connection for probably gonna be a reasonably weighty model there's gonna be no misalignment of the wheels so there shouldn't be no mis any misalignment of the wheels we've got drive axles we've got fuel cans we've got all sorts of greeblies um, links wheel parts yeah really really nice nicely molded crisply molded nothing wrong with that whatsoever i do like trump of the models um, they do make fantastic armor kits and you know sometimes some very interesting unusual subjects this in part now this is part C and if we look at this this has got the fifth wheel for the articulated tractor unit so this is where the commonality between different models of this has come in um, we've got the fuel tanks here I think and we've got parts for the mud guards we've got some interior parts here steering wheel maybe a little bit chunky you might be able to get a replacement part but it's probably going to do what you need it to do all finely molded all these grab handles are really finely molded again 
careful with the removal for the sprue because the, the attachment points are a little chunky. But all in all, nothing wrong with that. Uh, we're nearly there. A big pile of sprues aside of me here. Right, sprue. What have we got here? B. Slide those just up the table a little bit so I can clear it from behind so you can see the sprue properly. Right, this is um, gearbox final drive units, I think. Uh, we've got some of the joiner plates for the chassis. We've got um, possibly tops of storage boxes, just bits and pieces. We've got the torsion bars for the suspension here. Care will need to be taken, but the cleanup's minimal. Um, Moulding's nice. There's a few ejector pins, but absolutely nowhere where you're going to see them. Um, the bits you're going to see are beautifully moulded. The detail, if you look at these bolt details on this part here, absolutely fantastic. You know, all the cooling vanes on the gearboxes and drives and whatnot, absolutely fantastic. Not a problem. I actually think that might be the deck for the winch. And then the final screw, which has got the cab floor in it, and it's got the chassis rails for one of the other members of this Maz family, is screw A. So we've got the cab floor here, so there's the front cab. This will be where the engine is, front runners, uh, running boards, and then underneath, um, underneath you've got just well underneath, but there is detail to go on here. There is one or two bit of horsed off ejector pins, so that will need to be cleaned up a little bit. Don't worry about these chassis parts because they're not part of it. And then we've got the doors for the cab, and we've got the front dash if you not want to use the foot wedge, but we probably want to use the foot wedge, so I'd imagine this will all be sanded off. And then we'll use the foot wedge part. Uh, steering gear and a few other small bits and pieces, but yeah, that's it. Wow, that's a lot of plastic. So let's get me, I'll get all this back in the box and then we'll get the camera back on me and we'll have a few thoughts. So there we are Trumpeter's 135th scale, Maz, uh, KET T, um, heavy recovery vehicle thoughts uh, wow yeah really interesting vehicle lots of detail um, the quality of the uh, moldings look fantastic they're definitely well up there with trumpeters um, usual quality um, it's going to be an involved build let's not kid ourselves this isn't going to be an easy build so definitely not for the beginner more the intermediate or experienced modeler um, but something that when it is built will be unusual and very versatile in the fact that you should be able to pose it either stowed up for running or opened up for recovery. Um, and the options with today's climate are absolutely immense as to what you want to use it for. Um, an interesting vehicle, an interesting subject, and it's a bang up to date tooling from Trumpeter. So I have to say it's highly recommended. Price wise though, let's think about that. I paid what, 95 pound UK for it at the moment. It's not a cheap kit, but let's look at the part count let's look at the detail let's look at the potential for the kit and the length of time you're gonna to have to invest into it and that price becomes more and more tolerable and let's look at the the way the market's going with this sort of vehicles the price isn't going down it is going up so all in all it's quite reasonable it's certainly something that if you saved your cash up for to buy you're not going to be disappointed so um yeah that's it um, highly recommended I think yep and it's something that I do intend to build this one was actually bought as a birthday present for me so it's, it's certainly something I will build over the years not anytime soon but it's not going to go off in the stash <laughs> so if you have any questions or comments please feel free to put them down um, if you like what you see please feel free to subscribe give me the video a like and a thumbs up um, uh, much appreciated and thanks for sticking this far um, take care and until next time, happy modeling.